done. You're intelligent, I think, and you should face issue. But you're behaving like a moron, cursing me for where I come. But you find they have no water, you pay too much for butter. Take your steam, big man, go. 1981. 1980, the ONR ran for election. 1981, Sparrow sang the song. 81, 91, 2001. 28 years ago, Sparrow sang a song called We Like It So. Of the litany of things that he had to sing about that are wrong with this country. The first thing he talked about, we pipe a hand of water. Intelligent, I think, and you should say this issue. Yes, sir. You're behaving like a woman. 28 but years ago. Born, but you pipe pay hand no water. You pay too much for butter. Take your CV and go. The terrible school system is such a bloody problem. Take your CV and go. Agriculture is in a state plan. independence 1962 the queen said hold on your ass and go 1962 eric williams pull up a red white and black and give him one set of cock talk none of which he meant in 1962 eric williams took control of the plantation that is trinidad and tobago and told the slaves discipline tolerance production we want the negroes and that is all of we in the fields working 1962, 72, 80, 18 years. Within that 18 years, we had a black power uprising <clears throat> because the PNM, the party for black people, was running a country where black people couldn't get a job in a bank, where black people couldn't get promoted to supervisor, where black people work was to hew wood and draw water. We were in a country ruled by the PNM, the black party that was distressing black people 18 years after the queen gone. The issues that we are raising in the public space 28 years after Sparrow sang the song. You see, this PEP logo, walking the road that others have tried to cut. The ONR have tried to cut it, the NAR tried to cut it, even the COP for a while had intentions of cutting a better road. At some point along the way, we the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we fight our rescuers, we the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we say, this pipe a hand of water, you pay too much for butter, but we ain't want no change. The terrible school system is such a bloody problem. But we don't want to change. You can't get a job. You can't own a home. The bank doing you what they want. The cost of living ridiculous. You're living in fear. You could get gunned down, run down, shot down any minute of any day. And we like it so. 28 years now. Intelligent, I think, and you should say this 28 years ago, he started this up. Take your umbrella and go, take your pep and go. We're not interested, we like it so. <clears throat> we fight it. I tell somebody today, I wrote this, I'm trying to understand. Help me, help me, help me. To hear some trainees defend the dysfunction of immigration lines at the airport and explain it away with comments like five planes land at the same time or some other such nonsense as if these planes came unexpectedly, like there weren't flight plans logged between airport of departure and airport of arrival down to the last minute weeks and even months in advance. You see, you could go on, on one of these flight booking sites and book a ticket from England to Trinidad for December 2020. You could book that ticket now. You could book that ticket 
ticket now. And from the minute you book that ticket, that means a flight exists. And if that flight exists, that means the airline, the, 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 the airport of departure, and the airport of arrival, which is PRCO, are away. So if you are the jackass, let's say in these conditions, in this situation, short here, if you are the jackass in charge of Minister of National Security and immigration comes under the Ministry of National Security, if you were that jackass, the next jackass you need to talk to is the Chief Immigration Officer. Come, Pali. This is what you're getting paid for. Sit your ass down. Because if you don't like it, fire your blast itself. The lines in the airport is as a direct result of the failure of the chief immigration officer to do his blasted job. Fire him. Fire him today. Fire him now. That's how a country works. Because you see, if you had a real minister of national security operating a real immigration department, he would share information that for the next six months, flights will be arriving in this country at these times. And what I want you to do is identify for me if we have enough immigration officers that we can roster to be present to deal with it. And believe me, sycophants, trolls, jackasses, it is as simple as that. Fire her, fire him, fire them, fire the next tree in line. Listen, a man, hear the talker. Eh? For the next six months, flights are scheduled. You see, when 9 11 occurred, there was a million planes in the sky. When 9 11 occurred, they had to find a place to put all their planes all over the world. And airline controllers had to say, Are you going here? Are you going there? Bam, bam, bam. We're moving shit around. We need to put the planes on the ground. And they were able to without losing a single plane. Because you see, their traffic control has to be an air in exact science. It has to be timed. It has to be time and motion. It has to be planned. And the plans need to be executed. Or oh, people will die. Planes will fall out of the sky. Planes will crash into each other. Planes will crash into the ground. Planes will miss the airport altogether. We need to make sure that there are people who understand the exactitude of the science that sends a plane into the sky and brings it back down safely. It's like somebody said to me at the scene of an accident once where the car was so completely destroyed. He said to me, these young people, they only know zero to 100. But 100 to zero is something else entirely. Entirely. To the Minister of National Security, you incompetent shit snake. Meet with your chief immigration officer and say, I have received information from the air traffic controllers that say for the next six months, we can reliably expect planes to land in this country at these times. Based on traffic capacity um, and, and past flights, we can anticipate three quarter, 50%, 70%, 90%. We can anticipate a thousand people between 10 and 12 a.m. on Tuesday, the 15th of July. Mr. Chief Immigration or Miss Chief Immigration Officer or what, whoever the ass has the job, hear this. You have one work. Make sure that you have enough personnel to man the counters to receive the people. If you don't, say that you don't. Don't wait for 5,000 people to line up in Piaco Airport and then say, well, we, are not, we don't have enough people. Don't say it then. A jackass could say it then. A monkey could say it then. A fool could say, hey boy, look, it looked like they don't have enough people in the counters. Any moron could say it then. The reason you get the big walk and have all the big stripes is so that you could, we, we want to assume you have the intellectual capacity to understand the job. And the job is a simple one. To read that schedule and to make sure that you have people rostered to address the unlisten. That is the job. If you do agree, quit. If you don't like it, quit. If you don't want to hear that, quit. 
We don't want you to come and take the job and then say, I don't like how it's being done. Listen, your work is to do the blasted job. And if you don't like the job, Christ, go and make mango and char and bottle it and sell it on the side of the road. But stop making life hard for people and to the sycophants and to the trolls and to the jackasses defending these failed political governments. Understand this. Planes have been taking off and landing since Orville and Wilbur Wright figured out how to keep a plane in the sky for 30 minutes. The second flight was timed. The third flight was planned. Come on, please. Let us get it. Let us get this country to a place. This is all I want. I don't need you to vote for me, you know. God is my witness. The real mission is to get all of you woken up to the point this man talking sense. That plane, when it left New York five hours ago, they knew where it was going. A man woke up to a counter in the airport and said, I would like to go to New York. And they say, well, it's $3,000. He said, I don't have the money. They said, well, how are you going? He said, but I just want to drop. Oh, you're going there anyway. That's how we thinking. That's how we thinking. We're thinking because because five hours ago, a plane left Toronto and you could have been an immigration officer sleeping in your bed for the first three hours of that flight and then wake up, stretch, pee, bathe, brush your teeth, pour on your fancy, ja, 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 and show up. Yeah, how long you stay? You have any cocaine? You have any foreign exchange that we should know about that we could seize? Enjoy your stay. Let it work. Come on. It's not rocket science. It's not. To the trolls and the sicko fans that are defending it and say the line was shorter under Kamla or the line was sweeter under PNM. Go shut all your asses. You all are not helping anything. Anything at all. Nothing. When you open your mouth to talk against people asking for a better country, you are not helping. You are working against yourself. Many of the people who have defended these governments find themselves now suffering because of their own words, because of their own defense of the madness that is the PNM and the UNC deliberately ruining things so that the one person can ride in. Dominic Hadid, I can save the day. I've been bottling water. I can bottle water for the country. Michael Nahus, Faris Al Rawi, brother. Faris, brother in law. Faris, wife, brother, who benefited from the 23 million at Tree Alexandra Place. Tell me today. Dominic is the man, and he'll do it cheaper. We live in a country where the company that was supplying ketchup to KFC by KFC. I, I did arithmetic in school, some maths, and I used the geometry pan a little time. But if you could show me the equation where you could sell Ketchup to KFC in such volumes at such a profit that you end up owning KFC. That's Trinidad. That's Trinidad. You give Dominic Hadid access to a hole in the ground because he said they say he owns a well and he does. A well is a hole in the ground. At the bottom of the well is water and you could own the well but you will never own the water. The water that you discover at the bottom of your well, Dominic, that's the people of Trinidad and Tobago own. That is them own your well. Beautiful well, well done. You could own a million well in Trinidad and Tobago. If you hit oil, it belongs to the people. If you hit water, it belongs to the people. Understand how that works? Anything, gas, belongs to the people. If you hit a stream of mango juice that we didn't know was available, that's the people on too. 
because we own all of it. Now, we set up an organization. I believe it was set up at the time around the cholera epidemic when they realized people was putting their wells too close to the soak away and we was cross-contaminating drinking water with raw sewage when they had to dig out the northern part of the savannah that we call the hollows today that was our first reservoir. I think we created a water authority then and, and, and the overflow that runs under the savannah road by Stolmeyer Castle into the, into the wildflower park that this next one percenter Richard Azar claim as he owned that too, the overflow, all of that connected to our history when we had water, when we had water problems and we created a water authority. And the water authority's job is to manage water on behalf of the people, not to run down the road and kick them in the head because they're using a hose. That's not the purpose of the water authority. And somewhere along the way, we've lost our way because you see, we've allowed ourselves to be treated like slaves, like Negroes on a plantation, kick up in your face, whip on your back because massa say. But you see, in this situation, we the people, we, all the black people, all the Indian people, all the homeless people, all of we, we own this country. You see, the sycophants and the trolls and the few Balize draggers and Kamala defenders will have you believe that somehow these people have an entitlement like royalty, but they don't. They're servants. Rowley's job is to walk behind you and ask you, am I doing a good job today? Are you happy? Do you feel safe? Are your children being properly educated? When you went to the hospital, were you treated with dignity and respect? Because if you weren't, I'll fix that right now. Because you see, as Prime Minister, that's my work. That's my job. But the sycophants and the trolls, the babies and draggers and the Kamala defenders and the Kool-Aid drinkers, red and yellow, I ain't gonna tell you. Because they don't know. Them born to take kick in the face. They will defend UNC and PNM watching their loved ones dead from drought and not know that the reason we don't have a proper 24 seven water supply is so that all of the rackets could run. All of them, massive billion dollar rackets could run. Lee Kuan Yew said, the difference between Trinidad and Tobago and Singapore is leadership. Lee Kuan Yew didn't find any oil or gas in Singapore. Singapore got in our independence same time with the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of do what the hell you like land, AKA Trinidad. Singapore got, got independence at the same time, but they had no oil and gas. They didn't have cocoa, they didn't have honey, they didn't have pepper, they didn't have nothing of value. So they got into shipping. Our shipping, our port loses $1 billion a year. Singapore, their port makes $1 billion profit a day. We lose a billion a year, they make a billion a day, and Gregory Abood from Doma wants to tell you how to run the port. Jackass farm. We're getting ready for a jackass race. And TV6 and CNC3, owned by two one percenters, a big fat man named Sanger and our next cocky eye guy named Warner. And the two of them selling bullshit into your house, propaganda nonsense. The big problem of the country today is that Gary was on Bujuban dance stage. Shout out. So you don't get to think and you don't get to say. And this is why Silky draws Faris Johnny Sukaran Al Rawi in the parliament, grinding out laws, trying to shut me up on social media. He ain't care about the rest of them, Samuel Stafford and, and Stefan Rees and the rest of them. They're making little noise. They have little following, but they have nowhere to go after their noise. So they can talk. The problem with Philip Edward Alexander is, and the Progressive Empowerment Party is, they actually have plans and policies that are waking the public up and saying, but what the hell is this? What went on for the last 56 years in this country? If these people are saying it is as simple as putting a freaking well, a hole in the ground, where the water does collect when it flood, Christ almighty, a monkey could tell you, save that water. But we hire people to deliberately design drainage in this country to take the bounty of fresh water that drowns this country every year and throw it away in the sea. The Digo Martin River 
starts in the hills of Bagatelle and comes down Dego Martin Main Road, dividing Dego Martin from Pitti Valley. The Crystal Stream Highway runs along it till it reaches Lorraine Fitzwilliams. No, um, this woman, Wendy Fitzwilliams Boulevard. And it comes down there and it runs through and it goes behind into West Morins and it runs down to between Goodwood Gardens and Victoria Gardens and West Morins and between and between Columbus Drive and West Morins by the sea and it dumps all of that fresh water all of it Digo Martin alone, that Digo Martin River alone could collect and hold enough water for this entire country for a year. Just that river, just the water that that river throws away. All that is by gate. Put a gate at the end where West Morins, where the river reached West Morins by the sea. Put a gate there and hold about 10 million gallons of water. Hold it. Hold that. If you're not going to put a retention pond, Christ, put a freaking gate and hold that. The reality of our nation is it is deliberately mismanaged so that one percenters could make money. Dominic Hadid couldn't give away a bottle of water in this country if it was coming with a hug up and a ears kiss. If the country had a proper water supply, they would have no water trucks. There would be no, there would be no Lianos and no Ross and no Tough Tank. There would be no pumps. Half a peak's business gone. We'd have saved plenty money in electricity and about, about 100,000 square feet of land per constituency that is under water tanks. We would need that if we had a proper water management. And water management is as simple as identify first listen forget all the talk if we have to suffer if the plan gonna take with three years we take in for the three years identify all the places you're digging dams retention ponds and holding slips for water just identify those places when you're passing long circular mall next time the whole front of long circular mall the base underneath the multi-story car park in long circular mall all of that is a retention pond. All of it. All of it is to hold water for long circular mall. And it under a mall. And it under a multi-story car park. And it there and you don't know. And I saying that so you could know that under your church, under your school, under the road, under the park, under anything, Japan built a storm drain that could hold hundreds of millions of gallons of water. Massive facility under the city. And its job is, when the rains get too much for the storm drains that they have, they open and it drops in there until that is full. And then they start pumping that out to sea. It's a system and a plan. The Romans came up with a way to take water from the valley and send it over the mountain Using aqueducts, the Romans came up with that. We have a facility in Panama and Suez where you can take water from one side of the planet and lift ships through a series of locks, massive trillion ton ships, and bring them safely floating through on the other side. Water, water management. Water management has been with us on this planet for as long as man has been alive. We've built our houses near running streams and built water wheels to generate power. We didn't know we was generating electricity any time we weren't. We were using that power to generate grinding mills. The water wheel in Tobago was to grind sugar. We had a couple of them in Trinidad Tobago. We had one, we have one, the remnants of it up in Blue Basin, Blue Range, up on the top of the Martin there. We have a water wheel there that grind sugar because we understood that we could harness the power of water. But what we never understood in this country is that we could also harness the bounty of water. Just that. 
And if it's three years, the Progressive Empowerment Party anticipates three years massive building exercise in 41 constituencies. Do you know, this may shock some of you, that there is exact science that will tell you the consumption of water for a constituency? Do you know that there's something in, in society, there's a profession called actuarians? Actuarians could tell you at what age young Indian men driving red cars living in the West will die? That they could work out that to an almost exact number because statistics bear out over time. It's just a matter of compiling and crunching data so that we could know that Diego Martin West needs 15 million gallons of water a year. Now we could say, for the first six months of the year, we get in with 15 million, normal, normal. And the other six months of the year, we don't have it. So as, as we get the 15 million and we throw away about 200 million in the sea, let's create a facility to hold 15 million. You know, we could build a massive lake in central Trinidad and use it for entertainment. People could go and swim in the lake. We could make a huge natural lake in Trinidad and Tobago that people could enjoy themselves at, but that water is held for everybody. We don't have to desalinate nothing. Everybody say, but the sea right there desalinate. Desalination is an expensive, energy inefficient process. It is a last minute thing. Trinidad and Tobago has one solution that neither the PNM nor the UNC nor any version of themselves, no Kamala Keep, Pat Man, Manning, Pandy, none of them ever told you that the solution to all of our water problems is to catch the water and hold it. The Progressive Empowerment Party puts our water management policy in a sentence. Decentralize water management and distribution to the 41 constituencies. What does that mean? Break WASA up into 41 versions of itself, all of them answerable to central government. Hear that. Hear that. Hear just that. 41 water authorities, not one. 41. So each of them would be responsible for identifying the consumption capacity of the constituency that they are serving. And they will identify a source of water. I tell people all the time, in Manchester United, there is a man whose job it is. At when Manchester is playing football in Manchester United, when the final whistle blow, he works in the electric company and his job is to put extra electricity into the grid the minute the referee blow that whistle because he is anticipating a spike in the demand for electricity the minute because they know because they do this like a science and they know that the minute the referee blow that whistle everybody will and turn on the tea kettle to make a cup of tea to make a cup of tea and the demand for cups of tea reflects in a drain on the grid and that they have to manage that and they have to time that during the tea they time it the length of time it takes for a kettle to boil so they could start to pull back so it is not rocket science it is simply they used to have a joke that the meteorological office have a string hanging outside if it dry, it's sunny. If it wet, it rainy. If it's shaking, it windy. And while that may be a joke, it's also a fact. You know when it is raining. You know when it is not. I keep saying, in the dry season, prepare for flood. And in the rainy season, prepare for drought. Decentralize. All decentralized water. Break it up. Create 41 separate autonomous profit driven water management companies who has as their responsibility the movement and processing and purification of sewage but their job is to catch hold purify treat 
and distribute pure water in their constituencies. You could actually have a department of water and the department of water should have scientists, technicians whose job it is once a week to go to every single water company and take a sample and test it. Test the water. Test the water in Digo Martin West, in Tokomans, in Tobago East, in Orpish, Orpush North. Test the water so that you will know if the water company is doing its job. And the Department of Water is also the people who will get the phone call from the people of Port of Spain, North St. Anne's West, who call to say, hey, we are no water. So they will hang up the phone and call the management of the company that is responsible for Port of Spain, North St. Anne's West. And they will say, what's going on? And they say, well, we have a massive problem. Our generator broke down. We're fixing it. We need six hours. We need some help. And he, that person, will call adjoining constituencies and ask them, do you have the capacity to dump some water into Port of Spain, North St. Anne's West? Because their system down. And you open a valve. Open a big valve. That your hand closed where your system meet my system and your system dry so when I open the valve it will suck water from me into you and people have water you see it's as simple as that in the United States of America when you look you will see it in small towns in cities too you will see these water tanks high up in the sky these big wrong water tanks and I didn't know what they were for and they are actually gravity fed pressure tanks that when water is in the system they pump it into that and when water pressure is low it falls naturally and sends pressure in everybody's tap so that you don't have to get a pump everybody don't have to have their own pump you could delay that that is a gravity feed pump sending water at serious horsepower we've not managed this country They've inherited a country from the Queen and two different versions of a 1%. The white people that had owned McEnany, Alston's, and A.G. Robinson, and Neil and Massey, those white people who lost everything in the 80s recession that allowed the fortunate Syrians who for some magical reason had enough money to buy up all of it. But that's another conversation for another time. But, but two versions, the whites and now the Syrians, we, we've allowed that 1% madness to dictate the political directorate and what we choose to do with our power of our parliament and our cabinet and our government. Nothing is done that serves the people. So if water could serve the people, screw that. If water could give me money, jam that. So right now, I believe the same way they ruined Petrotrin so they could sell Petrotrin to themselves and make money. Is the same thing they're trying to do with Wasa and TNTech and TSTT. Peter O'Connor, for all his good heart, come on my wall just now and tell me. People winning their own water doesn't compete with other people's taps. And on the surface, that's a fact. But the truth of the matter is, there is one law for the 1% and another law for others. And that Dominic Hadid and Blue Waters does not have an entitlement to water above and beyond the average citizens of this country who own the water. And I want Peter O'Connor and everybody else to understand that. And yes, I may come across as I have an anger for the contract mafia and the 1%. And I do because of what they've done to my country. You see, I never wanted to have to get into politics. And this is me jumping in a fight, the party fight. I don't want to be in the fight. But this is me having these conversations every day with Trinidad and Tobago, trying to wake our people up to tell them what is being done to you is wrong. And that you're tolerating it and that you're defending it to your peril. Stop choosing the massa of your own choosing and choose instead emancipation. Choose emancipation. Demand it. Emancipate yourself from the 1% and the two political parties that they use as overseers to fool and shackle you. That's our truth. That's our whole truth. I don't 
I don't want people to have to like me. I don't talk as if I'm trying to sell me. I'm never doing that. I don't care who come and join the party and tell me, we could go a lot further. Philip's ideas are beautiful, but we need him to package it better and come across more like Obama. All these Obama jackasses that left the PEP, that went to form the Obama party, boss all, every one of them. Not one of them know where to go now. All of them, all them, and the handful of people that they thief from me, all come back to me. Because they realize that for all the Obama bullshit they're talking, they have nothing to give them. That they can't handle this fight. This is a real fight. Dominic Hadid doesn't want to know that there is somebody like Philip Alexander who says, if the water is in crisis, turn off the water from blue waters and give it to the people because it's their water. That's the truth. That is the stone cold absolute truth. And all I want is the people of this country to get themselves to a point where they're not accepting bullshit from anybody. And the reason the Syrians fight me is the exact reasons the PNM should be fighting black people and the UNC should be fighting Indian people. It is my people first I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. When Michael Nahus come to give me shit talk this morning, I expose him for the country to see. And I'll go with you, partner, all the way. All the way. I will expose Sabga. I will come at you so that my black brothers and my Indian sisters could see that if race determines, if you let your race determine your politics, or if like some of the others that sitting on the sideline and talking a good fight, but they will never expose their friends and their family who they benefit from. You see me? My mission is to show you that this country could fix real easy. Real, real easy. This is a nation that borrowed money from China, hundreds of millions of dollars, to build glory projects like the bullshit of Napa Sapa Tapa, to build nonsense like the Brian Lara Stadium, that while it may have paid off Brian Lara's gambling debts, it does nothing for the country except give some pum pum shorts a place to wind down low and some cooler draggers a place to go and interfere with pum pum shorts. But it wasn't worth $1.2 billion to the people of China Tobago, Bay, were not even to them. And they felt like they had no power. They felt like if China and Manning and China and Rowley decided it's so, but that is wrong. Because Manning's power is your vote. Manning's power, Rowley's power is your vote. Without your vote, Rowley parking cars down on Independence Square this morning. And yes, he's not a good geologist. So he wouldn't be making money in geology because nobody would hire the man responsible for Labitco, Taruba, and La Salturas. Kid Rowley is a shit hung. He should have to pay back the nation and give back the doctorate. Because whoever give Kid Rowley that doctorate unleash him on this nation into believing that that jackass know what he's doing. But that jackass is responsible for La Salturas. And tell them that you could build an industrial estate on floating ground in a pitch lake, Labitco. Take back that doctorate from this jackass and let him go and wash car down by Sabga building in town. The reality is, and I've said this, when Mario Sabga Abud and Peter George Sr. said that the little 5,000 Syrians is the most powerful in the country, I drag that bullshit and I expose it. And I tell them, I say, you ain't no power. The people who work for you give you power. The people who buy from you give you power. And if both of them boycott you, you and your children down inside rituals trying to fry burger this morning. So pat to freak down. It is time the people of this country recognize the power of their labor. Recognize the power of the money in their pocket. Watch now. I just spend my money with authority, you know. And if you don't respect it, and you don't treat me with the respect that I like, I will go elsewhere. I'll do it out your product entirely.
There's nothing you sell it that I need. And I want Trinidadians to understand that completely. Your labor, your labor is important. Have respect for yourself and for the and for the job that and if you feel that you're working in a shit snake environment, quit that job. The power of the money in your pocket, and last and not least, the power of your vote. That's what you are as a citizen. The power of the country contained in your individual labor, your consumption, and your vote. It is I who brought this to Trinidad and Tobago. I'm listening to other wannabe Phillips talking this shit. But let me know when they ask from the elbow. If I tell you, understand what it means. It means that you have the authority to tell Keith Rowley today to either fix this situation or fire your blast itself. One million people stand up in the street this morning and the game changed. In fact, it don't matter if you're a million. It could be 100,000, it could be 50,000, 10,000, 25,000 of us sent Glenn Ramadan Singh scurrying to the parliament to pass the children's bill into law. 50,000 of us sent Ram Logan, Kamala, and the rest of them in the parliament to write a new section 34 to repeal the first one. The power of the people. The power of the people. The parliament is the power of the people. Those mocking pretenders, dressing fancy and talking big, are in there with your permission. they with your permission. You say, okay, go inside. Yesterday I pulled over a senator. I ain't calling his name because I see he panicked. When he was driving his car with his big MP sticker up onto the pavement, I pull alongside him and I said, that's where you parking. He said, you're making this an issue. I said, brother, that MP sticker means you have a responsibility to lead. That everybody else who pass, drive past, walk past, and see your car park on that pavement with that MP sticker thing, is that right? That normal look at MP did it. And I watch him get a little nervous because everybody know I have a full time front and back camera everywhere I go and recording everything. But I'm not putting him on blast because I called another former senator, somebody that I respect, and he said, nah. Yeah, bad guy. He just getting a little carried away. But I know after that situation, he ain't gonna be so he ain't gonna be so quick to park on the pavement again. And we, the people of Trinidad, we, we, and I tell you, I tell you, listen. One morning, boy. One morning, I tell you this, eh? I on the way to the radio out of Diego Martin. Now I know the traffic out of Diego Martin is because Suru Drambachan is a stunting jackass. Suru Drambachan is an egotistical, stunting jackass who can't take advice from nobody. But coming out of Dego Martin, if you just move the lane between Powder Magazine and the Seventh Day Adventist Hospital, you have about 200 meters there. And if you just shift it to the left, because all the property exists, all you need is a backhoe and a barber green and a steamroller. And in two days, the road widen and we get the extra lane and all the traffic that comes as five lanes that need to become three before it becomes four, it will be lessened because we need that lane. So Rudra was in a hurry to open the four roads bypass that I designed. He was in a hurry to cut a ribbon with Kamala. And they didn't want to give me the acknowledgement that it was my design that they did, but no problem. The other half of the design, they failed to do. So I know, I know, I know, coming out of Dego Martin on a morning is a lot of traffic. But this morning, it was frightfully so. And I had an interview on the radio. So when I reached Powder Magazine, I know the lane is there. And I pulled onto the shoulder and I went around. And a traffic warden stopped me. And he asked for my driver's permit and my insurance. I said, officer, I know I'm wrong, but I kind of late for a radio show. He said, boss, driver's permit and insurance. I hand it. And the police officer who was on the other side take his time and cross and come over. And when he see me, he said, Nah, not you. Not, not you. Not you. You ain't do that. Not you. I don't believe that. And he walked away. And I feel shame, boy. 
Jaffe Ward and watch him, watch me, because Jaffe Ward and I know who I am. And he say, and he had me back my permit and my child. I said, go ahead. He said, well, I'm gone. And I have never done that since. Now, I mean, if I rush in to get myself with a family member to the hospital, I drive in over the island. But to say that I in a hurry and I will take that chance again after what that police officer said. You see, the way he said it to me and the disappointment in his voice, I know him. I may never see him again. I may not recognize him. But the disappointment in his voice spoke for everybody else who listens to me. And the way he said, nah, not you. Not you. This is not the first time I'm talking about this. I talked about it on the radio that day. When he said, not you, I felt bad. I felt like my words meant something to this gentleman and it was I was giving him a light in his life and that I myself was destroying that and and to that police officer I want to tell you you hurt me deep and I hope I had that effect on that senator yesterday I really do I really do but to all the people suffering for water in Trinidad and Tobago it is as a direct result of deliberate mismanagement and failure of the PNM and the UNC to create proper retention, proper catchment, hold the water in the rainy season to use in the dry season. That's the absolute solution. And the fact that you cannot... I was reading something and we were talking about the planes and immigration. When you're a sycophant, you cannot live in a world where time and motion is a science and planning a reality. When the timetables of immigration officers could be set around something as definite as booked plane arrival schedules. Or is it that for us, plane arrivals and sea bridge connections have to be treated with goldfish-like memories? That every time we experience it, it is the first time we experience it? Our country is a shithole because party loyalists, hey, to the people who are going to put God out of their thoughts to write me now and say, Philip, you shouldn't say the country is a shithole. I will say the country is a shithole until it stops being one. And the first step in fixing it is facing it. You and I, whoever you are, we live in a shithole. And the moment 1.4 million of us realize that, all of the issues, the mishandling of the Venezuelan refugee crisis, the drama with the media, all of it, all of it will come to an end. Our country is a shithole because party loyalists put party before country and would rather have their parents and children die from drought than admit that the jackasses in government have had a thousand years of season cycles to plot when exactly we would need the most water to prepare for it. Or that building dams and retention ponds where rainwater naturally settles during floods is too advanced for our frail, trinity minds to comprehend. The 1% and the contract mafia's defense of deliberate, deliberate government ineptitude and mismanagement is understandable as that is how they make their millions. What I don't understand is what do sycophants and party trolls get? The satisfaction of suffering at the hands of a master of your own choosing? Does a PNM or UNC party card get you into a public hospital or better service? Does it get your child into a prestige school? Does it free you from bank's rates and rapacious charges? Whipped out during an armed robbery or a gang fight crossfire, does it shield you or save your life? At the end of the term, at the end of their term, do the Ishes and Steves, Dupre's, Calders and Johnny O's write royalty checks to their defenders? I mean, I have no problem with PNM and UNC sycophants and trolls fighting each other over the race war their parties inflict on all of us. But why would they need to fight everyone else? Why would they fight logic? Why would they fight real plans that even they know will change things for the better and make the country a better place? I really am confused. What is it that has been done to these long-suffering party loyalists that make them so fervently defend their suffering? What? I don't get it. And I said this morning, what's up? The only question I want answered is, where does corporate Trinidad 
get the water to make the products they sell if the water levels are dangerously low. Where does Hadid get the water that goes into Blue Water's bottles? Is he importing it? Where does Sadga get the water to make Kariban star? Where is Muhammad getting the water to make chubby? It would seem to me that the average citizens who pay all the taxes and uphold the entire country are always relegated to last in line and treated with discourtesy for what is essentially their property. If water is dangerously low, as you say, turn off the water to the non-essential 1% factories until water levels are normalized. It would seem to me that we are not at crisis levels as yet if we still have sufficient water to use making soft drinks and beer. The purpose of these shows always My purpose in politics is one reason, to wake everybody up. The sooner we do, is the better chance we have of heading off us ending up like Venezuela. The sooner we do, if we do end up like Venezuela, because we have some upheavals and confrontations to happen, it's gonna happen. You know, the, the, the situation is bad, it's dire. All of a sudden, they want to be giving you good news. The Express and the Guardian are good news. Carl is making a profit. Bullshit. I tell you bullshit. Ask to see the books and see if they've not sold, redirected, rebranded debt as an asset. These people think they're smart. They're playing with the wrong man. public offices that have been populated by friends and finances and hacks of the one percent and the contract mafia manipulating the nation through a bullshit race politics that helps no race nigga coolie politics i help nobody it don't help you it don't help your grandparents it don't help your grandchildren what the hell you're doing it is time to bring back a better trinidad and tobago yeah it is time it is really way past time we in danger, the ship sinking, they looting it. The next government you will vote in the office have to have belly balls and backbone to go after them. Because don't think they're giving up that easy, you know. Don't know they go vote so. You need to vote somebody in the office that's capable of standing up to these people.
The only difference between the Progressive Empowerment Party and all of those who've gone before is that we have social media. The Guardian, The Express, The Newsday, TV6, Bomb, Mirror, CNC3, all of these versions of what represents the 1% owned and operated propaganda media controlled what people got to know so it determined what people got to think that is called managing the national narrative and it is what Faris Arawi is working hard to shut social media down for they want that desperate because right now Philip Edward Alexander and the Progressive Empowerment Party manages the national narrative. Yes, every now and then they will come and distract you with that bullshit. Gary and Buju, Gary and Sat, Nalini and the Buck. But all that is for a time. At the end of it, when it all settles, the people know that they've been treated like fools, they've been made asses of. And these people are going to run out of ways to distract you. Not only that, Nobody had any reason to be buying any Guardian or Express in the first place. And nobody running home to watch CNC3 and TV6. It's over. It's practically done. They have like three people working in Guardian whole building. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. Wake yourself up. <laughs>
Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.